Hey, it's Friday afternoon. I am on my way to go look at welders and I gotta go to the steel company and pick up about $500 worth of metal for this plastic mulch layer project that I'm not nervous about, but it's a pretty big project to build one of these and I'm not a fabricator. I mean, I know enough about welding and metal work to get myself in trouble. So Friday, we'll just got back from the steel company and that's what $600 worth of uh, good old steel looks like. Got this at Kodiak Steel out in Clinton and tell you what, if it's metal, they have it on hand. They are a huge distributor of iron and they have everything you need to build anything. So we got 600 bucks here and this will make most of the mulch layer and we're committed. <laughs> so we're definitely committed. No turning back. This stuff's not refundable once it's cut to length. Now we just got to get it laid out in the barn and we're going to go up tonight and pick out a welder. I'm still ahead of the game. You got 600 bucks into the iron. The welder I'm not going to really count as part of the cost for the machine because I need one for the for our place. I can't believe I don't own a welder. I think it's because I don't really enjoy welding. Um, but now we'll get one. So we'll get started on this and I'll lay out the plans on the floor. You know, I got kind of mocked up with some wood that I just had an idea. I got sketched out. It should be pretty simple. If you want to follow along or interested in building one, I've tried to make it like layman terms as far as layout goes. Super simple angles, easy cuts, easy corners, easy welds. So I'll get this thing started and then we'll catch up with you once we get a welder. So the mulch layer project is underway. I got started last night working on the pan. This is the main bed shaping pan and press pan. So those of you who don't know what I'm building, I'm a ra uh, raised bed plastic mulch layer. So what it does is this will hook behind the tractor. It'll be three point hitch. This is not done, just the beginning phases of it. But it's hooked to the tractor and it brings the soil in from a V to a 30 inch raised six inch bed. I'm using quarter inch plate steel and I had some of the pieces cut where I bought it, but I had to cut the edges off with a acetylene torch to get some fitment just right. But today I'm just gonna focus on getting this box, the, the bed shaper box and the press pan all welded and fabbed up. And then I'll start building the frame that this will attach to that carries the plastic rolls. And um, there'll be a roller here, the plastic, the plastic will come down under this roll and then there'll be wheel press wheels and bearing discs so it's it's quite a machine but it's really not all that complicated either so I'm gonna try out the new Vulcan welder got it at Harbor Freight the other night it's a stick welder I was gonna get a MIG but I just didn't want to spend the money and plus then I gotta deal with gas and if it's windy out I can't use it and blah 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 so there's plenty to do this weekend and went to an equipment auction yesterday and finally broke the ice at an auction. I've never bought anything. I've always been too nervous or missed the call. So I picked up this John Deere Disc Hero. Super nice shape. Needs a couple bearing caps if I was to be real nitpicky. It'll probably work just as it is. Um, it's a transport. Just gotta get a cylinder for it. Lift cylinder. Not a big deal at all. But I needed one up here real bad. So, worked out. Super good buy on it. 500 bucks. Um, an old timer there said, I got a good deal. He said they're usually about 100 bucks a foot on width. So it's an eight footer and he said high price at the auction would have been 800. So 500 bucks I thought was pretty fair. 
anyways I'll get this thing cleaned up if I ever get chance before I use it and put a coat of paint back on it but for now I'm gonna just get back into the barn and I gotta get this mulch layer built this week so right now I gotta run down and get a dust mask um, and I'm gonna pick up a respirator that stick well is wicked smoky and I know a lot of guys don't wear them but <laughs> I don't weld much and just a little bit of it bothers me so I'm gonna run down and grab those couple things and then keep going on it and I'll, we'll keep doing some updates and I'll keep you posted on the progress I've got a bunch of steel here I should have enough by tonight to have the, the basic frame the whole layout at least tacked together and then I'll go crazy welding on it so we'll take a look at it in a little bit so I'm getting the bed shaper welded up uh, I'm working on the pan and it's coming out pretty good I am by no means a professional welder I just know how to weld I good enough to get me by um, but the Vulcan welder I think has a lot of potential especially with somebody with a lot of experience with stick welding um, but it's gonna work just fine for the project so I've got it all welded up this standing on end right now just because I'm not very good at doing vertical welds and stuff but I'm gonna add a gusset now I gotta add a square stock gusset from the top here to the bottom here there's gonna be a lot of pressure wanting to pull out on this when it's going through the ground so I'm gonna add gussets to it and so the dimension is 24 inches for the side pieces which make up make up like the plow I guess it's quarter inch plate steel by 8 inches wide and I use 8 inch wide flat bar that's what they sell at the steel shop so it's 24 inches two pieces 24 inches and then the tail pieces those are 8 inches wide as well by 16 inches long and then I got a 30 inch piece 12 inches wide for the this is the press pan this is what presses down the 30 inch bed what I don't know is I made it exactly 30 but as you know and I know just say you're making a sand castle when sometimes when you form the soil it'll crumble to the side so I think I'm gonna end up with a little wider than the 30 inch bed by the time the dirt settles so what I'm th the reason I kept this on at worst case scenario I can scribe this with a cutoff wheel and we can bend these in and I can and that will kind of help pull the soil in more and by the time it settles it will end up at 30 inches so that's why I left these tails on there if it works good you may not need to but we'll we'll go over that stuff but I just wanted to give some dimensions and then I use a quarter inch plate sheet to cover the top uh, I can't remember exactly what the size is but um, I'll if someone wants to build one of these I think the easiest thing to do is once I get it built completely I can do dimensions and come up with exact like an exact list that I use because I'm keeping track of everything but for the, just this build series video I'll just keep giving you updates on how it's coming along so I got to a stopping point today on the raised bed plastic mulch layer and I thought I'd just take a minute, recap what I did and for those of you who are still wondering what this thing does, I thought I'd show you. So this is going to have a three point hitch on it that mounts to the tractor just like a regular implement. This throat collects the dirt from five feet out and necks it down to 30 inches wide and then has a pan that'll press the bed. It's 30 inches wide and six inches tall. And then back here, there'll be a plastic, this will be the plastic layer mechanism. I still gotta build the rack for the plastic roll. And then the plastic will come down under this roller, which I gotta still install. It'll be on a pivot that's spring loaded that'll be spring loaded and then these wheels are what stretch the plastic and bring it down 
And then back here will be our covering discs, which I haven't gotten yet. But uh, worked all day today, and the press pan and the bed shapers all welded and solid. The frame's done. Just got some more welds to do. I ended up adding a lot more supports. I think this thing's gonna take a tremendous beating because if it hits a rock or something, there's gonna be a lot of force going through it. And you know, you're pulling it with a 50 <coughs> You're pulling it with a 50 horse tractor. So I don't think I can have too much bracing. And I'm not sure how good my welds are. <laughs> because, uh, we, the old Vulcan though, from Harbor Freight, been doing good. I think for 364 bucks, you can't beat it. No. So, anyways, I just wanted to give a kind of a recap of what happened today and what I got done. So, we're going to go out. The cows are out of pasture already. So, we're going to go move them and give them on some new grass. And, uh,. Probably work on this tomorrow and try to get this machine. Hopefully, I'm thinking this weekend to get mm -hmm. the machine out if the ground hardens up. It's going to have to. We're going to have to be out there no matter what next week. We need week. to get moving. So, we'll keep you posted and keep We'll keep, this, keep uh, our fingers crossed. <laughs> so, I'm doing the first test fit with the raised bed plastic mulch layer. And it fits nice, real nice. Uh, I was gonna just try the bed shaper itself in my garden, even though it's not tilled, but it's soft enough, but it's too muddy. So we're gonna have to wait to just try the shaper pan. Also, I'll keep building though. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work good. Uh, but yep, made the three point hitch assembly today, the top link. With the tractor supply, just got a couple universal category two pins. Just drilled through this two by two, each side. Plenty rugged enough. Rugged enough. Put some down bracing. I don't know if I overbuilt it, but I don't think there's any such thing, because it's gonna take a beating if you hit a rock or something. Um, it's, it's. I don't know how much it weighs right now. It's probably a couple hundred pounds, but I'm happy so far. I'm a little close to the rear tires, but it's plenty far enough away. I'll have to take my drawbar out when I'm doing this for real. Um, I still got to add the drip tape attachment. I'm going to go tomorrow and get the drip tape itself and the plastic mulch so I can get that system figured out on here and get it installed. I still got to put the, the rollers, the press wheels, and the covering discs on. And that's what this section back here is for. But making good progress. It's only I have about 12 hours of time into it so far. I think this is pretty much phase one on this build. The whole chassis is built. Now it's just time to put accessories on it. So that'll end it for this part and I'll uh, keep filming Part two with getting the drip tape attachment, the rollers, and all the other stuff. So I hope you are enjoying this and look forward to trying this out in the field.